So, Dada, do you actually like Destiny? Yes, I do ultimately still very much enjoy the game. Even just like the game in a vacuum, just like the raw gameplay of it. I still enjoy playing. I still enjoy raiding with my friends. It's just a matter of how much am I playing per week or how much do I enjoy playing the game when things are slow? And that varies depending on where we are in the year. How much would you play Destiny if you didn't make Destiny videos? Um, I think I'd still probably be playing to a degree, but I think it would also depend on how many friends friends I had playing. I don't know how much of an LFG gamer I would really be because historically speaking, I've always had some sort of a guild. Like when I was playing WoW, I, you know, would hop from guild to guild. If I still had a core group of friends who were still playing, I'd probably still be playing. Maybe not as much, but I do think I would still definitely be playing. Give me a number in hours per week you think you would be playing. Nowadays, uh, oof, probably doing my raids, maybe a little triumph grinding, probably be like five to 10, depending on what's going on. And if you had to play solo if you had no friends playing the game you had to be solo or lfg how many hours would you be putting in do you think probably a bit less i mean if i was solo only i probably would not be playing as much but if i was lfging maybe instead of three raids i'm only doing two or i'm only doing one i would not be playing as much if i was a completely solo or completely lfg gamer just because i'm used to not being that if you could only play one activity type forever out of gm nightfalls dungeons or raids which one and why it'd probably have to be raids i like having a full group of people. I love playing with my friends. The more people I can fit into a raid, the better. And raids were like the main reason that I wanted to play the game in the first place. Wow. You're such a social butterfly and that always shocks me. And it's so cute and wholesome. Online? Yes, I totally am. I want to be in guilds. I want to be playing with people. But in person, I'm like, literally everyone get away from me. I never want to see anybody. <laughs> I don't want to make more friends. If only one raid forever, which one and why? Of every single raid that's ever come out. Indeed too, yes. I mean, part of me wants to say Last Wish just because like, it's my favorite raid, but it's currently not well tuned, so it's not really that hard. They would tune it a little bit, so it would be a bit harder than it would probably be Last Wish. Assuming the difficulty level is adjusted is completely fair and valid. And Bungie, LOL, get on that. Please do that. What was your favorite Destiny meta of all time? PvE or PvP meta? Let's do both. There was definitely a time where I was like pretty excited at the prospect of Double Slug plus Anarchy, just because it was one of the very few times where every single weapon in our kit was being used. I don't know, I've had a few. Like There was a time where like Thunderlord was the go-to weapon in Last Wish or something like that. PvP? I feel like there was a time right before Beyond Light where everyone was relatively happy how PvP was going down. Like, right before Stasis came out, the vibe on PvP was like, this is pretty good. Like, there's some slight <laughs> yeah. adjustments. We gotta do some certain weapons here and there. But, like, it was around then where I was like, this ain't bad, you know? Yeah, I want to say they had just dealt with, like, Mountaintop Recluse. They were, like, the final complete outliers. Yeah. Favorite Destiny memory of all time. Oh, man. It's tough to beat Outbreak Prime back in uh, Rise of Iron. That was super fun. I remember Touch of Malice. You could get it early because you were able to hop from character to character to complete this thing that you were only supposed to be able to do once per day and just completely surprising everybody with a Touch of Malice video in the morning. To this day, literally the highest viewed video on my channel. What about Destiny 2? Last Wish is like, even though we fell two minutes short, it's still one of my absolute favorite memories of all time. The vault cleanings. The vault cleanings took off so much bigger than I ever thought they were going to. Like, it was just supposed to be a little dinky thing to do before Witch Queen. It was like, yeah, let's clean some vault. Look. Can we agree the most surprising part of those videos being so popular is that people just seem to really care about minute Destiny stuff? I guess so. If you took the view totals of all those videos, it's like multiple millions of views. And can we agree for literally 75% of Destiny, it doesn't matter what weapon you use. Oh, I would give you even more than, I would say like 90 to 95%. Yeah, literally wow. does not matter. Jez, what is up with you wearing glasses this whole time? I'm so glad you asked, Dado, and thank you for that organic, unprompted transition. This is your eyes currently. Small, vulnerable, kind of malnourished. And this is your eyes with GMG performance glasses. Impressive, powerful, able to feed an entire village, probably. All these screens in your life are like my stepdad, potentially dangerous and may be causing you physical harm. But in this case, it's the blue light and not all the empty bottles of whiskey. If your eyes could speak, they would say, we are tired of being alive. Also, stop looking at that thing. Why not ease their burden with GMG blue light blocking glasses? Reduce eye strain and look like Clark Kent in the process. This is you now. 
And this is due with GMG Performance Glasses. Black Friday sale alert, ooh woo. If you hate spending money but love not spending money, why not spend 40% less money on a pair of sexy glasses until November 28th? That's 40% off, which is almost half price. Click my link in the description to check them out or continue to raw dog reality and maybe regret it in the future. Sponsored by GMG and also my wife said I look quite handsome in these glasses. The last wish raid that, that led to Danielle and I meeting up in retrospect is absolutely a favorite memory. A literal life changer event. That has to absolutely be a favorite as well. And at some point in that video, I say, hey, I'm going to be in Seattle soon. What are you up to? And then Danielle was also there in that video, was she? She was also going to be in Seattle. It was just like the craziest amount of timing coincidences that all led to us meeting up and all that. I remember DMing you and saying, can we do lunch? And also I have a friend, Danielle, can I bring her? And you were like, yeah, cool, whatever. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> God, we got to move forward. We're only at question seven of 60. Look, these were some beefy ones to start. That's fine. If you could only use one destiny weapon forever in game. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, if there is a what exotic would you bring from D1 into D2 question on here, I will literally commit not alive. Listen, I need to keep the average view duration up. That's why all the Destiny questions are front loaded. So just bear with me. Okay, fine. Right now, let me look up dim. Hang on. <laughs> Damn. What am I even using right now? <laughs> it doesn't even know. I change things so much. Exotic or is it legendary? Or is it Any weapon. Now, if you choose a heavy weapon, you're not always going to have ammo for that heavy weapon. So consider that. It's probably like one of the exotic bows. Interesting. All so solid in like all aspects of the game. I think Tigus is probably the most satisfying. Delete one exotic weapon and one exotic armor piece from the game right now and why? Deleting last word. <laughs> F that gun. What? Why? F last word. Hate last word. <laughs> slap my wrist. F it. F last word. <laughs> really? Yeah, I've never liked last word. But like, first of all, no one's even using it. Ask me how much I care. Wow, that's so Ask interesting. Me how much okay. I care. That's just the first thing that comes to mind where it's just like, if you could delete last word, armor. Ooh, ooh, that is a lot tougher. I don't have any hatred for any specific armor. Not even Stompies or Gefalk? Jura Falcon, I have barely even played against recently just because I have not stepped into PvP. I don't have the same rage at the moment. I'm sure the moment I do and I see it <laughs> everywhere, I'll be like, literally, what is going on right now? But <laughs> yeah. what Exotic do you love but wish was better? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Kepri's horn. I don't love it, but I do wish it was better. What does it even do? I think that's probably prime for a buff. What about a weapon? Oh, man. Damn, I kind of got you with this. Yeah. Bad juju. Like, it's still very good, but I think it could use, like, a slight bump. Heart shadow. I want heart shadow to be a thing. Literally, what does it do? Exotic from the dungeon that you got on the second run. All good. Oh, yeah. I got two of those. Two-tailed fox. It's, like, basically never been relevant. Spare me with the, oh, it was relevant with the, 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 the. It's basically never been relevant. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And Literally just for the sound when you fire it is so satisfying and fun. Yeah. I want it to be better. Thum, thum. I feel it in my body every time. One small thing you wish you could change about Destiny. Let's get some more sorting options in this game. I want to be able to type a shader. Well, let me favorite the four shaders that I only use. Right, exactly. Let me favorite some shaders. One more organization tools. What's one big thing you'd change about Destiny? Oh my God. Well, let me take a look here. Um, <laughs> like less effing leveling or like remove XYZ. I want strike scoring to be like trials. Mm. I want like, I want PVE trials. That's what wow. I want. I want something that like rivals trials for PVE in terms of competitive thing. Two teams load into the same strike and at the end, whoever has combined with the best score and like the fastest time wins or something. Right before D2 came out, I did this thing called try hard strikes. We would do runs to try to get first place on the guardian.gg leaderboards. As dumb as it sounds, it was some of the most fun I had playing Destiny. Just like actually caring in content where you're not really supposed to care. What's one thing that elitist Datto would change if there was no repercussions or blowback and everyone would love it? Oh, jeez Louise. <laughs> Actually having the hardest content in the game, giving you the best items or like the most power. All of this grabbing a god roll off of a vendor stuff. Uh, -uh. I think that'd be gone if I had my way. I understand why it's a thing. Truly no repercussions. We're going back to hardest content in the game, get you the best stuff. So give me an example. What's the activity? And then what's the reward from that activity specifically? For example, mountaintop came from like 2100 in glory ranking or whatever. If you want like the absolute best gun in the game, you got to go beat a master raid. Damn. Okay. Look, I respect it. I know how many people would absolutely hate that and are so glad <laughs> yeah. that I am not in charge of the game. If you had to listen to one character forever in game, who would it be? If every voice line was voiced by the same character. I know you do not like Zavala. I enjoy Zavala. Mm -hmm. I also like Ikora. Probably one of them too. Really? Yeah. Every voice line. You would be sad about every voice line being Ikora. Could I turn sound off for voice line still? Mm. I would mute the game probably. I think probably Ikora. <laughs> okay. If you could only ever have 100 in one stat and have 
had to have zero in all the other stats. Which stat is the stat and why? I mean, resilience right now is just so insane. I feel like it'd be really, really difficult to say much else. And if this is for literally every single activity in the game, I don't see how you do anything other than resilience. F, marry, kill, oh, Zavala, boy. Ikora, and Mara. And Mara? Interesting. Mm. Probably gotta kill Zavala. Wow, after all the praise, Probably immediately have killing to. him off. <laughs> Probably have to. <laughs> okay. F, Mara, Mary, Ikora. That's the most sensible for me. I think so. No judgment here. If you were a Destiny raid boss, what suffix would you give yourself? For example, Atheon times Conflux. I can say mine while you're thinking, if you like. Yeah, go for it. Mine would be Jez, surprisingly incompetent. And then right after my like spawn in animation finished, I would trip over and instantly kill myself on something. <laughs> I don't want to go elitist. That's too easy. I probably like Dado the Unquestionable. Ooh, okay. Do not question me. I know more than you. Assuming it was good, would you rather a Destiny anime series or a Destiny live action series? <laughs> Assuming it's good. Yeah. I feel like they would be able to do more with an anime just because it's animated and you literally have like no restrictions at all. I think I would want to see a live action though, just to see what could it look like. All right, give me one second. Hang on. Danielle, can you get my ring downstairs? I took my ring off for exercise. I forgot to grab it and I'm using my hands a lot and I don't want someone in the comments being like, Where's Dado's wedding ring? Are they breaking up? Or even better, when on a face cam call with me, you take the ring off. <laughs> to, to, just to bait, keep the hope alive. <laughs> What live action celebrity would you want in the live action Destiny movie? I mean, you got to think like Ryan Reynolds is probably going to be a Cade. Who doesn't like Ryan Reynolds? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the obvious answer. Now give me the, the non-obvious answer. I want Andre Brower, Captain Holt on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I want him to be Zavala. I would like to see Brian Cranston bring his drug kingpin energy to the Zavala role, actually. That could be pretty interesting, yeah. Less wholesome and more like cold-blooded drug dealer who will murder your, your family for no reason. That is interesting. He, Zavala is not really that kind of guy, so mm -hmm. that would be interesting. I mean, they did explore some of Zavala's past in season 17. And we all know that the law doesn't count, so that's all good. Next question. <laughs> Uh, I lost my place. Anyway. Uh, here. I'm going to ask this for the guy that's drooling in your Twitch chat. Okay. Spamming oh this boy. question. Point him to this time code forever moving forward. And that is you must bring an exotic from D1 to D2. What is it? And what? Oh my God. I'm committing not alive. Ah, you have to answer it. Not alive. I'm dead. <laughs> I've perished. <laughs> Goodbye. What is even left? You got Twilight Garrison. And then I also thought of Last Curse, the beefy hand cannon. First curse. That's a good one. Oh, what did I call it? Last curse? Last curse. Yeah. <laughs> what is your most played? non-Destiny game of all time. Oh, World of Warcraft. Not even remotely close. What are we talking? Thousands of hours? Definitely. I remember having hundreds of days played. I've probably still played more WoW than I've played Destiny. Wow, that is such a problem. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Let me check my Destiny hours right now. Just on Steam is 142. We assumed all segments of Destiny were 142, 142, 142. Then maybe we're getting close. But I remember being well over 250 days played in World of Warcraft. That's 6,000 hours. <laughs> I... It would not surprise me if, if I was in the 10,000 hour range for World of Warcraft. Oh my God. I feel like I want to have an intervention just on behalf of your past self. I'm so oh, hurt yeah. by those figures. Yeah. When I was still playing some of my heaviest WoW, I was on the Dean's list in senior year of college. Damn. What is your most enjoyed game of all time? Probably Rock Band 2. Really? Yes. I played that a lot in college and I have like some of my best college memories from just like playing Rock Band with my friends. Okay, let's make your dream game right now. Take the world of one game, take the storytelling from another, and the combat from another. Combat, I know this is going to sound really lame to say, but like Destiny combat is, you know, again, in a vacuum, so incredibly fun. Yeah, I would have said the same thing. I would love it for it to be as full and as big as a typical MMO experience, like a, a World of Warcraft. I would love it to be on that scale. But what about the setting vibe? We're talking aesthetics, lore. Elden Ring, yeah, it kind of feels like a cop-out, but it's also incredibly good. I like how all the good things feel like cop-out answers. Storytelling. What game told the best story? I am so not a story gamer. God of War, I know, is incredibly good. Go with that. It's the first thing that came to mind. If you could be insanely good at any game, what would it be and why? I mean, who wouldn't love to be insanely good at, like, Counter-Strike and competing in tournaments? Any sort of, like, competitive shooter. I'd, I'd maybe even Overwatch, but, like, not nearly as much as something like Counter-Strike. I immediately thought Counter-Strike or Valorant as well. But I'm interested that you didn't say Apex. I'm not a big Battle Royale guy. I like Apex, but I think I relate a bit more to Counter-Strike than something like Apex. If you worked for IGN, what would you rate Destiny 
one overall out of 10. At launch? No, no, overall. Probably like seven, seven and a half. Eight would be probably pushing it, but I think people can make arguments for it. And now give me the Destiny 2 overall lifetime out of 10. Um, all right, let's drop Destiny 1 down to seven. Uh, let's make, let's <laughs> make Destiny 2 probably about a seven and a half or an eight, because I do think Destiny 2 is definitely better than D1. I won't get too deep into that, but I do think it is a better game. <laughs> From a seven to an eight out of 10, okay. I mean, I respect it. It's got at least a half click up. God, that's such a low bar, but still, okay, good. <laughs> I mean, it, it has. If we're trying to average the entire thing, you talk about D1 launch, I was like, oh, six. But then you have like Taken King, you're like, this is like a nine. And then like Rise of Iron was kind of like, eh, it's more like a seven. So I'm like, I'm trying to average them all together. We're done with gaming. Let's proceed onwards. We're onto the overall YouTube category now. Okay. What have you learned in almost 10 years of doing YouTube? Oh, people love exotic videos, dude. They love <laughs> okay. videos about exotics. A lot of people underestimate how tough it can be to continuously come up with things for nine to 10 years. Like I could do the same videos on a three month cycle for something like Destiny, but I would go absolutely nuts. Also, people don't realize how much of YouTube work can be like just production and writing and editing. And it's like very little gameplay, at least for someone like me, you know, you're more like I'm doing live gameplay and then chopping up funny moments. It's not a lot of scripting, but there's still a lot of editing work where you're doing subtitles and you're doing memes and you're doing sound effects. and blah, 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 blah. So the gameplay part ends up being a fraction of what it takes to actually edit the whole thing together. And this is not to be like, oh, woe is us YouTubers. We have it so hard. I know what my job is. I'm doing video editing for a video game. I'm very privileged to be in the position that I am, but it's not as glamorous as some people envision it is. People always say to me, is it awesome just playing video games for a living? And I'm like, well, if I play for one to two hours and then edit for 20 to 30 hours, am I really playing video games for a living? Right. Like how, how much video gaming am I really doing <laughs> yeah. um, on the YouTube? Like on the stream side, like, yeah, you're doing a lot of video gaming, but you're doing also eight straight hours of trying to entertain an audience. It's like hosting a party for eight hours. If you never became a YouTuber, what would you be doing? That is a good question because it ultimately would have depended on where my career in film and television went. I was down to like 50 bucks in my bank account right before Destiny launched and I was able to like support myself. So if that had gone on like another month or two, I might've had to go back and move in my parents and like figure out what my next career move was going to be like. I quite literally don't know because my life was at a crossroads essentially. Maybe television would have worked out. Maybe it wouldn't have and I would have had to go do something else. If views were guaranteed, what videos would you make on YouTube? I would love to do like more variety stuff. When I do stuff with Dream Team, even playing with like you and Danielle, but like other games, more entertaining kind of stuff as opposed to what's the best God roll for this set of weapons? Here's what I think about the TWAB. Like that stuff after nine years is getting a little stale. If you were starting a new channel tomorrow, what would it be about? The only thing that I think I could reasonably do is variety gaming. I think I'd be somewhat interested in making a channel about sneakers or a TCG, selectable uh, card games. Who's your most watched YouTube channel? Probably Funhouse, Linus Tech Tips. I've been watching uh, Secret Base a little bit. I'm choosing not to include Destiny in most of this. What's the best thing about YouTube as a job? Oh, the freedom. I'm my own boss. I set my own hours. If I want to have a day off where I'm just like, you know what? I'm not in the mood. I can just be like, yeah, I'm not in the mood. I'm not going to work today. If I want to go take a trip for a weekend, I can just do it. I don't have to worry about scheduling it three months in advance. If I ever go to a non-YouTube job, I'm going to miss that so bad. What's the worst thing about YouTube as a job? It's an infinitely long project. It never ends. If you want to stay relevant to some degree, you have to think about it every day, nonstop. For me anyway, it's tough to break away from that because you take too long of a break. Your channel doesn't get as much engagement anymore. And there's like some algorithm stuff there. I, I know it's not all algorithm stuff, but if you disappear for three months, that could be the beginning of the end for certain channels. I've seen it happen. Who's your dream YouTube collab? You can do YouTuber or celebrity. All right, this is the part where I say, I've already done a video with you, Jez. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time back when I was watching C-Nanners where I was like, God damn, it'd be so fun to game with like C-Nanners. That'd be so awesome. I've actually gotten to do some collabs with Funhouse. They, they were very high on my list. Doing something with Linus would probably be awesome. Oh, I'd love to see you and Linus. I think you guys would get along so well. I think something like that would be super, super fun. How old are you currently? I am 33. Okay. So what would 2012 Datto think of 2022 Datto? 23 years old. I'd just be super stoked. In that range between college ending and the YouTube channel starting up, it was tough. Working in the film industry, if anyone's working in the film industry, you know it's 12 to 14 hour days minimum. And if you're just starting out, you're a PA, you're making 10 bucks an hour. You're out there because you really want to be in the industry. You're not doing that because it's paying well right off the rip. For me, just like knowing I can come back and be like, hey, in like a year and a half to two years from now, you'll be all right. Just keep hanging in there and, and just keep going. Eventually, you're going to be fine. Why did you start making videos? I started making videos because my friend back in high school had video editing software and we would just make dumb videos. One of the first videos I ever made was 
for, I think it was ninth grade health project where we were doing like a project on heart disease or something. And we thought it would be a good idea as cars were driving by to wave at them and flag them down, running into the middle of the street and asking them what they knew about heart disease. And it was <laughs> so stupid. We ended up getting an A on the project because it was very good. Yeah, you did. So yeah, that was the first video I ever made. I have no idea where it is or if it's like on a tape somewhere. I would love to know if it is. But yeah, it was just me and my friends messing around in high school. Before the money, why did you keep making videos? It was fun. For the first two years of college, I made basically nothing in terms of like any video content. Friends invited me to the television station that was on our campus and uh, there was like original programming on there. And I remember being like, I could make something better than this. And uh, <laughs> the arrogance. me and my best friend, Derek, were like still really into gaming and all that kind of stuff. We're like, let's just make something. And we ended up making uh, like five episodes of a show. Couldn't really continue it past that first year because we were starting to enter senior year and it was love of the game really. And the early um, Call of Duty videos, that was still love of the game. That was love of the game. I remember seeing some montages and uh, I was like, oh, that'd be really fun to do. I want to try that. What's life after Destiny for you? Oh God, I have no idea. I, I am mentally committed to midway through 2024 with Destiny. Like when you say life after Destiny, do you mean like after Final Shape or like, are we talking like 20 years down the road? Does this franchise not ending? But let's say you're done with the franchise. Are you looking to make more money? Are you looking to get a regular job? Are you looking to retire? I wish I was in a position that I had that much money that I could retire. I don't know, really. I don't know what I would be interested in. I guess this is more like a life after YouTube. I would love to work on the Destiny franchise. I would not anymore want to work on the game, but I would love to be like producer side of the franchise where they're like making comics, making movies, making miniseries, making this, making that, stuff like that. Looking back on all the low points over the years, did you ever almost give up on YouTube or Destiny? Multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> the first major time where I was like, well, this is over, was two months <laughs> after release. <laughs> It was two months, two months after release. I was like, we're done here. Uh, <laughs> D1? For D1, yeah. I was like, I'm gonna start reaching out to that post-production house that uh, w that I was talking to and see if they'll take me because the game was getting terrible reviews. Uh, it basically only had like Vault of Glass and the raw gameplay keeping it alive. And I was like, there's no way this continues. And I emailed my contact back to the post-production house and they didn't respond. They stopped wow. responding to me. And I was like, oh no, what did I just do. I just gambled on YouTube and it only worked out for two months. And this was after the person that interviewed me was like, you should definitely try to make that happen because like that's a way better medium to be in. And that's where things are moving to. So I just kept going. I just kept making Destiny stuff and people just still stuck around. And I was like, okay, well, it's somehow we're still going. So let's keep it rolling. The second time was four months after D2 launch. I was like, well, <laughs> time to pack it in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it literally the exact same thing. I was like, there is nothing for me to talk about on this game. They've simplified it down so much. What is there for me to really discuss? What was the turnaround for D2? Like people just kept watching and you're like, all right, we're still here. Um, Yeah, people did keep watching. So that that is one thing. Like part of the reason that I am still going is people keep watching. Like my viewership, you know, ebbs and flows based on where we are in a season. Bungie basically was like, come give us an intervention to like unscrew up our game. If you could have made Destiny videos, what game would you cover? Probably would have been WoW. I think the only other game that I have any remote interest covering going into the future would be whatever Riot's new MMO is going to be in like 2027 or whenever the hell that game is going to come out. Literally, besides Destiny, my channel is a graveyard of games. <laughs> it's a complete graveyard. Besides Monster Hunter. Literally, like, don't exist anymore. If it wasn't Destiny, it would have been nothing at all. I never would have started the path towards doing what I do. Does reading hate comments on any platform ever affect you? It did a while ago. Nowadays, not really that much. I always want to respond to people with some, like, really really good insults. Once every like two months, I'll have like a super toxic comment just to like open the valve and like let out a bunch of steam. Most of the time, otherwise I'm just like, look, this person is clearly in a state where like they need help. And also I'm just so much better than them. So I'm not even going to acknowledge their existence. <laughs> um, I make frequent use of the mute button on Twitter. Very rare that I block because blocking to a lot of people means haha, I won. But yeah, muting yeah. is like, just keep talking into the void. I won't hear it. And a decent amount of the time I end up being right anyway. So that's kind of validating. But <laughs> <laughs> That's almost like I know what I'm talking about sometimes. Nowadays, I'm just kind of like, I want to respond to you, but clearly you are in a position in life where your life is not very good and uh, you have some issues to work out and I'm not going to add to the pile 99% of the time. And then 1% of the time, I'm going to shit on a kid's life and everyone is going <laughs> to romp on them and just absolutely get annihilated, literally bullied off the internet. Sometimes you just need to let them know. What would your gamer tag be if Dado was taken? I went by Vex for a couple of years during WoW, short for Vexatious, which means 
means annoying. Because when I played WoW, I was a teenager, I was annoying. Would you still do Vex to this day with, with the Destiny tie-in if you had to go off data? Maybe, but I think I probably would have used Destiny to come up with a completely fresh name. I've got a few would you rathers, and then I've got a bunch of miscellaneous questions that we can potentially lightning round if you want. Hit me. So would you rather eat a rotisserie chicken-sized horse that is also rotisserie, or fight a horse-sized rotisserie chicken that's alive but has also been rotisserie? <laughs> One more time. <laughs> what? This was from Aid Pro on Twitter. <laughs> Would you rather <laughs> eat a rotisserie chicken sized horse? <laughs> okay. In brackets, that is also rotisserie. I'm not a monster, is what he said. Yeah, no, I figured the, the chicken has. You said rotisserie chicken. A rotisserie yeah. chicken that's been rotisserie? It's yes. already rotisserie chicken. I got it. Okay. <laughs> correct, correct. So, in other words, it's not a real horse, but just the no, size I get of it. a rotisserie chicken. I, I get it. I get it. It's an important distinction. Or, would you rather fight a horse-sized rotisserie chicken that's alive but has been rotisserie. I'm eating the horse-sized rotisserie chicken. Mm. Love rotisserie chicken. Who doesn't? <laughs> Thank you, Aunt Pro. If you were part mermaid, part sausage, would you rather be top half mermaid, bottom half sausage, or top half sausage, bottom half mermaid? What are these questions? Did you go to a an elementary school and be like, hey kids, say the dumbest shit you can imagine, which to a child is literally just anything that comes out of their mouth. I believe this was from a fully functioning adult on Twitter. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. I top half mermaid, because then at least I can still have arms and a face and I won't just literally be a sausage. <laughs> but assume that you're like a sentient sausage. So you can have like sausage arms. So the top half is a mermaid. The top half of a mermaid is just a, a person. Right. I want my top half to be person. That feels like a loophole to this question. What if you were also top half person sausage? You know what, deal. This was a dumb question. I just <laughs> okay. want to let it be known. Someone wanted to know what stats they should prioritize in their Mario Kart 8 Deluxe build. Oh, Jesus. They've been leaning into acceleration, but don't know if it's better than handling. Any thoughts? I like acceleration more as someone who is frequently ahead of the pack, because when you get hit by an item, you got to speed back up. Would you rather have infinite cheese and no movies or unlimited movies, but no movies? But no cheese, you mean? I said what I said. So unlimited movies, but no movies mm -hmm. <laughs> or unlimited cheese and no movies. I infinite, infinite cheese, but no movies. Okay. And then or movies, unlimited movies, but no movies. I don't understand the question. So where, where are you struggling? Talk me through okay. it. But how can you have something that is unlimited and also not? Mm -hmm. So it's unlimited movies. Yeah, right. But no mm -hmm. movies. Right, but un also unlimited movies. But you can't have both at the same time. How can you have something that is unlimited but also limited? I didn't say it was limited. I you said, said it was unlimited, unlimited movies. Yeah, I said unlimited movies. Yeah, but also no, no movies. Right, well, yeah, also no movies. But I don't... Editor, cut this. <laughs> no, my editor doesn't answer to you. So which option do you go with, bud? I'll go with infinite on. cheese and no movies. Mm, okay, that's incorrect, but please explain your reasoning. Because I like cheese and the qu and the and the option is an actual option that is uh, makes sense versus mm. the other one which makes no sense. Right. So you're happy to forgo the movies for the cheese? Yeah. Mm. Lightning round. Dream female cosplay. Bayonetta or Sylvanas? How would you describe your feet? They're fine. <laughs> Nothing remarkable. They're just feet. Mm -hmm. Cold. They're cold. I get cold feet. If you had to get cosmetic surgery with no side effects, what would you get? I would get my, um, my D. That's what we've been waiting for. It's what we wanted all along. Deviated septum fixed so I could breathe while in bed. And for the children at home, there's a thing in my nose, not supposed to be the way that it is. Whenever I lay on one side when I'm trying to sleep, I have to hold a finger in my right nostril and that's the only way I can breathe. So are you saying that you do put one finger in your nose to breathe at night sometimes? On occasion, yes, I will. Wow. What was your favorite thing about living with Amy and I for that time? Just being able to have other people around. Cause we were like, that was hard of the pandemic. Mm. We couldn't really do anything. We couldn't really go anywhere and just having other people around and do some fun things around the house with was really nice dude it was such a fun time i look back yeah. so fondly
And I yeah. just, in hindsight, I wish we would have recorded more videos together. So but much we were more. Also, yeah. Oh, we were also busy though. We were also busy and we were all just so like, I know Danielle was like bummed. Like she was not going through a good time in 2020. Yeah, we were we were all busy. We all had our own things going on. But yeah, looking back, I, I would have been like, we should have recorded so much more stuff. What did you hate as a kid, but now love as an adult? I mean, vegetables is an easy one. I don't love vegetables, but I tolerate them now. But as a kid, I was like, I'm a kid, literally don't care. I'm 12, F vegetables. Vegetables. How many days a week would you say you're throwing in a veg on one of the meals? Close to every day. Wow. I try to have a okay. little something. What's the veg of choice? I love mashed potato. Mashed potato is one of my favorite foods of all time. That does not count as a vegetable literally at all. Potato's a vegetable. Potato's a fun carb. That is not a vegetable. Okay. First of all, it is a vegetable. But second of all, <laughs> to actually <laughs> answer the question, yeah, 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 the yeah, things yeah. that I tolerate, asparagus, cauliflower, broccoli. I'm not a huge sweet potato guys, so I tolerate sweet potato. Again, sweet potato, more of a fun carb, way less of a vegetable, but I see what you're saying. Look, still classified as a vegetable. What did you love as a kid, but now hate as an adult? Honestly, I feel like it's taking naps. As a kid, I just want to be like awake and gaming, and I was like, I don't have time. Okay, now that's a good answer, but sorry, this question was, what do you hate as an adult? And it sounds like you love naps as an adult. I thought this was, what did you hate as a kid and love as an adult? No, the first one was said as a kid loves an adult. The second question was, what did you love as a kid, but you now hate? Oh, I'm dumb. Now that is true. Editor, keep the part where I embarrassed Addo. That will literally never happen again. That's fine. Might still be like sleep related. As a kid, I loved staying up like Omega late. Nowadays, the idea of being up until 5, 6 a.m. just gremlin gaming, I'm not really about that anymore. Don't ever think it. Top three music artists of all time for you. Metallica, Between the Buried and Me. Not me looking at my song playlist. <laughs> Whatever that last one was, completely made up. There's no way that's a real band. Between the Buried and Me, they're very real. Shorten the name. Like it's a whole sentence, you know what I mean? BT Bam. I'll say Dance Gavin Dance. Really? Yeah. No, we'll go Iron Maiden. And out of those three, who's number one? Gotta be Metallica. One guy wanted to know if Rifle Barrel, Tactical Mag, Surplus, Incandescent with a Range Master Work is a good role on his Compass Rose Shotgun. Surplus? I know who this is. <laughs> Why do you know who this is? It's fine. That's fine. <laughs> it, people give a lot of props to Incandescent. People who like Incandescent remind me of the people who are like, Bacon's the best thing ever. Or like, Nutella's the best thing ever. I put on everything and blah, blah, blah. I eat both together at the same time as Holly. Anyway, the shotgun's fine. We had a lot of questions from people saying, what do you like about Jez? So oh, like my apologies, Jez. but also please tell me. You're always trying to like make a bit happen and always trying to make jokes happen. And I like that. And you're always trying to figure out stuff to make me laugh because I just don't laugh at stuff, which I hate by the <laughs> way. That's true. And I appreciate that. Might I say that sounded like such a backhanded compliment disguised as an insult early on because you were like, listen, you're always trying to be funny and I got to respect the attempt. <laughs> I've said this a million times. I wish I just easily laughed at things. I've always thought that about Danny is that life seems like it would be more fun if you could truly find things as funny as she does. Yeah, oh, 100%. But I appreciate that you are constantly looking for different ways to try to get me to have that kind of a laugh. What's the weirdest thing your dog has ever done? I don't know, he doesn't really do anything weird. The weirdest thing he likes doing right now is he has a little bed that has like a fold in it so you can kind of like go under. He loves to like get himself under the bed, but like his entire body under the bed. So he can't see, he's just in pitch black darkness. <laughs> And he just yeah. scoots himself under. And I think he does that whenever he's like, Ugh, no one's paying attention to me right now. But always after about five minutes, he peeks his little head out. Is anyone still here? So yeah, he <laughs> likes to cute. go under the covers in like complete darkness or like hide his face. I love that he's like, well, what if I just buried myself alive right now? No one would even notice. And then five minutes later, he's like, okay, but did you notice? Let me know. Right, yeah. Favorite shoe in your collection? Nike SB Purple Lobster. Love that shoe. I have two pairs of them. One to keep nice and then one to actually wear around. And why fave? I love purple, but I love the specific way purple is on this shoe. Here, I'll literally bring it up so you can have a visual. Oh, yes. This is my favorite shoe. I love how deep purple is. I love the metallic purple on the swoosh. And what did you pay for that shoe? $850. Did you actually? That's how much it's going for right now. It retailed in 2018 for, I imagine, the price of Nike SBs, which is usually around 100 bucks. Wait, so you paid 150 and now they're worth 850 Is that right? No, I paid 850 and they're still worth approximately 850 I wasn't uh, into shoes in 2018. Oh, uh, okay. Might I say, I deliberately didn't ask you the price before I asked you what the favorite was because I didn't want you to avoid based on the price. I will totally admit the price of those, but they're my absolute favorite. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, why do people collect shoes if you're not gonna wear them? Why do people collect coins if you're not gonna spend them? Why do people collect stamps if you're not gonna send letters? It's like saying, why do people like anything? Right, yeah, I just do. I like to display them. They look nice. If you're the guy in the comments about to leave a comment about that, literally don't bother. And also if I say it, I will shadow ban you. Why start dressing as hot bunny girls? It was just something different. I, I was inspired by the League of Legends player, Sneaky, and I liked 
like to get a reaction out of people. That's definitely a part of it as well. You get to experience a different part of just life in general. Like I didn't know anything about makeup. I don't know how I like any of that. It was just, it was just something that girls did in the bathroom for an hour before we had to go somewhere. Yeah, it was like a combination of like, that looks fun. Gonna get a reaction out of people. I get to do something a little bit different and uh, it's just fun. It's really fun to do for me. I have a very good time doing it. Now, if we need to cut this, that is literally fine. But there were a lot of COK questions. Okay, like what? Listen, I've come up with two that I think are a good potential way to answer this. Okay. You may decline to answer at any time. Question one, are you happy with the hog size? Yeah, but like most dudes, you could probably tack on another inch. You know what I mean? Every, if you ask every single dude, on the planet. You want another inch? Who is gonna say no? That is a fascinating insight. Literally the follow-up question was going to be, if you had to make it either smaller or bigger, which one yeah. are you going with? I think everyone would, look, not everyone wants like a like a Subway footlong sandwich in their pants. I get it. But I think the overwhelming majority of dudes would be like, another inch? Yeah, I'll take, I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> oh, bigger muscles, question mark? Right, exactly. <laughs> oh, more handsome face? Yeah, please. <laughs> If you're a guy and you're saying no to that, congratulations on your huge COK. For me, I'm thinking, listen, if you're trying to park a car in a garage, if you're all out of space, making it bigger, driving around, you're going to feel good. But when you try and park it in the garage, we got a problem. Right. You know what I'm saying? No, I, I get it that you have a huge COK and that you're just trying <laughs> to just very subtly throw that into the video. That's fine. That being said, of course, I'm going to take an extra inch. I'll do literally anything. Please exactly. Don't. Everyone's taking another inch. I don't care who you are. You're yeah. probably taking it. Listen, can I be more specific? I'll take a soft inch every day of the week, baby. Um, Oh, a soft inch would be huge. Honestly, indifferent. <laughs> whichever one's being offered to me, like, hey, like you're the one giving it to me. I will graciously accept whatever gift you want to bestow upon. Me. Listen, I think we will have appeased the crowd on that. I think they'll be stoked. All right, good. And thank you for your honesty. What item worth $100 or less do you love the most and or couldn't live without? I know I'm going to ask this question to Danielle and she's like, oh yeah, it's totally blah. And I'm like, oh my God, yes, of course. Why didn't I think of that? Is there anything in your um, kitchen that falls under this category? Yeah, I'm trying to like go from room to room being like, what is in every room? It it might just be like a certain hoodie. When it's hoodie season, oh my God, I'm all about it. Mine would be, I have this little um, like battery operated whisk. I just click the button and it just goes and just spins my caffeine in like three seconds. I can see how you would like that. Oh my God, dude. Every day <laughs> I use that. I'm like, thank you, Jesus, to be born at this time. Give me an item worth more than $100 that you love. I mean, I could just go straight back to the cosplay, the, the effing titties, but that's not something I use every day. You know what I'll say is my wireless headset. I love just being able to like roam around. I can throw on music. I don't have to take it off, put it back on every single effing time. For me, it would be my AirPods. Oh my God. I listen to them probably eight hours a day. Final question. If you could never say the word cringe again, what is your replacement? And I'm sure the word cringe doesn't count, right? Mm, definitely not. I'm saying Flavin a lot, but that doesn't have the same meaning. So I don't know if that really works. Part of me loves the replacement as Flavin because it isn't immediately obvious what you mean, but it's still funny to say. It basically like repeating a bad joke back to someone and be like, eh, Flavin, like, <laughs> yeah. you know? So it, it does work like a little bit. If I said to you, what you just said was extremely flavored. I feel like I like the fact that that's on you to work out what I just said. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you're in on it, in mm. which case, not flavored. <laughs>